Welcome once more everybody, Boyd back with you. Well, we're up to uh, part 12 of our build series and this might be the final one in the regular part of the series, you guys. We're really close to the end here. You can see the ship is looking really sweet. It's all in one piece, sitting up on its stand all nice and square. Um, I've got the deflector housing just kind of temporarily set in place there so you can see how that's gonna look. I'll pop that off here in a little bit because I wanna talk to you about uh, some painting tips on that. Um, up here, what I've done since you guys have last seen the ship is I've mounted these inner Bassard domes that have the actual spokes. Now, if you're going to use the um, Tenet Controls uh, LED type, you don't really need to put these in if you don't want because you're going to be getting, you know, the, the, the spinning effect is actually created by the uh, rotation of the uh, lighting effect with the LEDs in there. But um, in the first few of these that I did, um, with those type boards, I didn't put these in, but since then I've gone ahead and started putting these in. I don't know, probably for like the last 10 of these or so. And um, I just like it because um, it actually, if you if you use your imagination a little bit and you look at it just at the right angle, uh, it actually gives a really nice simulation of these actually moving. Uh, but the nice thing is, is that when it, the model is, uh, you know, not lit and it's just sitting here stationary, um, you know, with the uh, outer dome in place, you can still see the detail of the uh, the inner spokes in there, which I, I think is a nice thing. Now, um, to mount those, it was really easy. I um, The first thing I did is I scuffed them all down with some steel wool to give the diffusion that I wanted. And then um, I took my uh, regular tester's silver and a you know out of a little jar with a tiny little brush, and I just brushed on all the um, silver lines there. Uh, they, you know, they... Jerry's masking set does come with masks, but it takes quite a while to put them on and everything, and I'm pretty steady with a brush, so I just, you know, you got a pretty uh, deep trench right there. Now, so uh, I went over in a couple spots just a little bit, so, you know, being that those trenches are so recessed, I just took a piece of 600 grit sandpaper and held it flat and went over everything, and uh, that sanded all the excess paint and just left the paint down inside the, uh, you know, the trenches right there, and it looks nice and clean. So, um... They're all diffused and everything. Now, um, they do have that inner center stock part, right? So what I did is I got in there with my clippers and I clipped that off so that it was just a little bit less than flush with the edge of the overall thing so that that inner um, stock would not touch the, uh, you know, the control board in here. And then it was just a matter of taking a little bit of canopy glue and gluing all the way, you know, I put a little bead all the way around the edge of this thing. And... Uh, uh, basically what I did here is I stood the model up uh, against my backdrop right here and um, glued them on and made sure they were centered and uh, so they're on there for good now that canopy glue is plenty strong for holding these on and uh, yet soft enough where again if I ever had to have any kind of problem with this later on I highly doubt it uh, it's never happened in the you know 45 plus of these that I've built where one of these bassards have failed or whatever um, the uh, you know, with a little bit of wiggling, a little bit of, you know, working at it here, you can get these off without damaging anything, you know. But they're not going to fall out or anything like that. That stuff will last forever. In fact, it gives a little bit of a, you know, almost like a silicone kind of seal on there where they do have a little bit of a flexibility to them. So vibrations and stuff won't affect them. So let's fire it up. And um, here's a look at the front now. Remember, we don't have the outer domes on. Those are still, still down here on the rack. I'm going to take these over to the other bench. And show you some prep work we're going to do on those. These are kind of tricky because they got these weird, you know, one thing I don't like about this kit is when they cast these, they cast these sprues right on here where um, the edge of it is right up to the edge of where you're actually going to be able to see that really nice part of the dome. So no matter what you do when you cut these off um, and, uh, you know, I'll take a little bit of sandpaper and go in there and clean them up and I'll even dab in a couple of drops of um, like my... Uh, 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 aqua gloss clear or something like that or even some of my automotive clear just with a brush and try to hide that little it'll it'll leave a little dimple right there you guys it'll leave a little kind of a gouge in the uh, plastic that you can just barely see on the edge when these are pushed down in be nicer if they mounted you know molded these somehow on the edge or something like that but uh, that's just the way it was done unfortunately you can see those other ones right there need to be cut off they're gonna leave marks as well but you can barely see them. and like I said we can do a few little things here to try to uh, make them look a little bit better and of course I just go over these inside and out with some double-aught steel wool to do my uh, diffusion I used to um, 
paint these with testers dull coat but you know from a few feet away they look great but when you get right up to them and look at them with that testers with light shining through behind it you can see the little um specks you know of the uh of the paint and it's uh it's just you know i just don't like it the swirled effect with uh, the steel wool looks really close to the way they look on the pictures i saw of the original domes and everything so that's what i do for these um, then over here you can see we've got all these small little parts that need to go on the uh, saucer and everything i've got the navigation lights here painted this is just the clear set these have been painted with the uh, tamiya transparent just with a brush that stuff uh, if you paint it on there and take your time thin it a little bit before you put it on it brushes on there it looks just like it's been sprayed on it looks you know it smooths out really nice painted them on the top and the bottom on our little navigation lights here I cut off the stalks on the back side before I painted them because they're gonna glue on the top here just about flush right and um, what I'll also do here is I'll use canopy glue to glue these on because you don't want to use model glue here guys because these are painted right and uh, that'll instantly kinda reactivate that paint so if you're putting them on there and you happen to bump it or slide it or do anything to it if you don't place it you know perfectly the first time you put it down on there and if you do have to slide it or move it a little bit it's gonna leave a red paint stain next to it I've learned that the hard way <laughs> many models of this ago so I don't do it that way anymore the canopy glue is plenty strong to hold those down and um, they'll never come off unless you, you know try to pry them off and um, it won't stain the paint or attack anything so if you goof a little bit you know just take it back off wipe it off with some you know water and a little towel and start over and uh, so that's an easy way to do that same thing here a little bit of glue on a toothpick canopy glue in these little slots right here and we'll be dropping all these windows in so I'm gonna go over to the bench what I've got to do is get them all cut away from the sprue and then uh, these little windows right here just like I mentioned on these grills the last time the edges of them have to be sanded a little bit so that they'll drop in there nice and easy whether otherwise they're gonna push in there super hard and you may chip your paint around the edges that's another thing that I learned about this kit uh, the tolerances are so close to begin with but now you've got you know two or three coats of paint over the top of that with your primer and you know clear and everything else so um, you need to shrink these windows down just a little and of course I'm gonna diffuse those with my white paint on the back side just like I did everything else here and so the lighting looks the same right that's the whole trick to that but uh, so those are the things we're gonna do we've got to put the bridge dome on we've got to put the lower sensor dome on a few little small detail parts and this this big this big fella here is done you guys here's a look at the um, uh, impulse engines I don't think I'd showed you guys those yet we, we glued that piece on last time and there's those grills that I talked about just using the decals you can see how nice those show up. Ralph's got that nice little uh, pulsing effect going on there, which is pretty cool. Here's the uh, detail of the um, little uh, dome there. Now, I just took, remember I left that uh, top part of that housing inside there? I told you I filled that up with solar res. Well, I just took a brush with some of my Tamiya transparent green, and I just put a real light coat on there. So I didn't want it super green. I just wanted it to give that little greenish glow and I painted that on there and then um, the little detail inside of the dome there there's another clear piece you'll see it has three little uh, kind of square things that stick up those are supposed to be painted a transparent amber so you can see I did that and I put that in there and uh, drop that down and it gives a beautiful little extra amount of little detail there now these three little spots right here you guys remember that we um, drilled those little holes you can see our lights coming up we're going to use some point fifty um, fiber optic to um, to drop down on those I'm gonna mushroom the tips with my lighter so they get a nice little dome on the top they'll be nice and small and we'll paint those with some of our Tamiya transparent I believe it's uh, uh, two red ones you know on the outside edges and a green one in the center if I remember correct but I'll double check that and uh, we'll slide that fiber optic in there with a little bit of glue and those will look great and um, there's the back of our shuttle bay our, our uh, lights that we did with our masks now remember I just showed you I talked about how I just hand painted that in there and then uh, it just worked out just perfect there's our little stern light right above that we masked off way back in the early part of the build all this stuff is showing up now you guys um, got our little side marker lights now one thing I'm gonna point out on this model guys you may compare this if you want to to, to see what you think um, 
I, I constantly evolve when I build these and, you know, try different things and try to, you know, always try to improve. And um, on my earlier builds, I think that these lights that I was putting in here on the sides were a little bit too strong because looking at the, the flyby shots of this ship on the TV show, now I tend to look at the um, the old original series without the CGI. I don't honestly say I don't care for the CGI. I like to see the old models and uh, use them for reference and everything. And I've got a little program I can use on my computer where I can do screen grabs and all that. And um, this little light on the side should just look like it does now where it's, you know, it, it's blinking and you see it. But I had them more of a, you know, brighter. I was using a um, five millimeter lighthouse LED in there uh, in my previous builds. And so this one I tried the uh, the smaller, I uh, talked to Jerry about what they are. They're actually a 1.8 millimeter lighthouse. And I showed you that little LED at the beginning of this when I was putting it in. It's this, the kind of rectangle shaped one with a little, you know, little uh, round dome in the center of it. And I use that little round dome and that fits perfectly in this um this spot right here and it's you know it doesn't stick out we're looking at the pictures of the restore chip it doesn't stick out it's like sort of just a little bit less than flush in there um, so that's how I've got this set up now and I'm I think I'm a lot happier with it I think that blinking uh, looks a lot more like you know just a pinpoint of light blinking and not you know showing any kind of a haze around it or anything being too bright and it much more matches this kind of one up here on the side where it's just another small little pinpoint of light as well um, so that's uh that's where we are right now you guys we'll head over to the bench and uh set the model up over there and we'll go ahead and get all these little pieces cut out and uh start putting them down and uh we'll do a little bit of work on these uh bassards here getting them uh, set up and ready to be installed be right back okay you guys well we're getting really close to the end here so we're going to be putting on the rest of these small little detail parts and i'll take you through that let me show you what i've got here i've got um my windows that go on the top here, these are these uh, rectangle shaped ones. As I talked about, I sanded down the edges of these um, so that I know they're going to fit in there much better without having to push really hard and hopefully we won't be chipping any of the paint. Now I back painted these with my white, just my regular um, craft acrylic white, the same thing I did with all the rest of the windows on the ship to uh, keep from getting too much light glare and uh, causing hot spots. Now you want to pay attention to these parts guys because if you look carefully at them the uh, top surface is sort of you know uh, domed where the the bottom surface of these is sort of concave that's where you can tell which is which and the top is a little bit smoother than the bottom side so you want to make sure you paint the bottom side I've also got here the um, bridge dome and the lower sensor dome same thing on these light block painted with just basic white and then I showed you this little tree over here already, which is um, our navigation lights and the little beacons that go on the side of the bridge and everything here. Um, I'm actually using these. They call for you to use these ones on the end, which are part number um, uh, 121, I believe. And uh, I don't like those. They, they, they've got kind of a weird little slot on them, and they go on from the inside. I use the ones right next to them because they don't, uh, I think those normally go on right up here. But instead of using those, I like to use these other ones, these kind of teardrop shaped ones for this spot right here that, that look more like streamlined or whatever. So I'm going to just kind of swap that out a little bit. You know, you can do whatever you want on your bill, but just the way I'm doing it on mine. Um, and like I said, we have the navigation lights. So I've cut off the stalks so that they'll fit down on here really nice. Now, um, here's the deflector dish housing. I'll just explain real quick um, what I did to paint this. I just used my Kraft Acrylic um, Aged Copper and uh for the for the general thing uh what i did is i painted this entire thing including the dish black first with just my regular uh cheap light blocking black in the can and um that way it gives a nice dark kind of a pre-shading effect to this so when i sprayed the copper over it it looks really nice um and i did that whole thing then i did the center of the dish here a little bit with some of the uh it's it's another acrylic paint called bronze from uh, folk art which kind of, you know, changes the texture of a little bit. And then uh, the center part there, the little needle I did with some uh, of my VHT Chrome, which is a spray can type paint that I've used before. It looks just like chrome plating. And it gives a really realistic looking metallic finish on that. So um, that's all painted ready to go. And you can see I got it black on the back here, like I talked about, to block light. This is thin enough where if you don't, you know, even after you just paint it, 
it'll still leak a little bit of light so you want to light block that and make sure you do that um, so that's ready to go so I've got just a little bit of um, canopy glue here on my cardboard and I'm using a toothpick and I'm just gonna dab a little bit of canopy glue in these um, the edges of these slots here where the uh, our first windows are gonna go down okay and uh, hopefully they'll drop right in there like I said without much problem with a little bit of sanding that seems to help a whole lot get these all glued up and ready to go yeah if they fit really tight too guys once they are down in there they are down in there um, they're not gonna come out they're pretty much staying there on their own pressure to get them back out for any reason you're gonna have to stick a hobby knife down in there and pry them out and that's not gonna be fun you're probably gonna chip your paint and all that so make sure you're um, you know fully ready to go when you get ready to drop these in um, now if you look at them close too, you can see that these are slightly curved they're just slightly curved they just have a little bit of a radius on one side and you can see where that matches up with the slot here so um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I got that one going the right way let's drop it in there again Yep, it dropped out in there real smooth, real nice, guys. That's exactly what we were trying to do. All right. This one here, the bigger one. Perfect. I'm not having to fight them down in there at all. That's exactly what we wanted. Okay. Over here on this one. Yeah, I got too much of a corner at one time. You got to drop them in there fairly flat. Okay. Last one here. That one down in. Okay, we're good there. Let's go ahead and do the uh, bridge dome. Just putting a little bit of glue around that inner bead there. Now, sometimes I have to take the uh, hobby knife and clear off this edge a little bit because it fits really tight too. Everything fits pretty tight on this model. And um, but we'll give it a shot here, see how it goes. The bridge isn't indexed. The dome is, so it just goes on anyway. And hopefully it'll drop in there for us. There it goes. Nice and flat. Okay. Now, let's uh, clip off one of our Well, actually guys, let's let's do this. Um, let's go ahead and I'm going to turn the model over and uh, we'll go ahead and do the lower uh, sensor dome. Let me get everything. This thing always takes up every bit of room that we've got. Let me make sure I'm still in camera there for you. Okay, we're good. Yeah, let's go ahead and do this one. Now, this one does have a little um, slot and uh, I can see where it lines up, so we're going to do the same thing. Basically, you want to make sure that one of these lines. Uh, is is pointing directly forward, one pointing directly at the neck, and then you know that you're indexed right. Okay. A little bit of glue on this guy. I always use this canopy glue for these clear plastic parts, you guys, because uh, one mistake with model glue, and it's stained. Now you can let it dry, and you can spend some time with some... Uh, sandpaper and buffing compound and you can get it to clean back up but you know this stuff if you glob a little bit it doesn't leave any kind of bad stains on it so it'll wipe right off all right just making sure that we're down all the way that we heard the little snap lined up nice and centered okay now we've got this other little piece it's um some people put it on and some don't. I, I put it on. It's um, it's this little tip piece that goes on underneath of the, uh, you know, on the on the very top of the uh, dome down here. It's actually the phaser emitter. Um, it looks like a little miniature cannon kind of thing with a little red tip on it. If you look at the up close pictures of the uh, the big ship, you'll see it on there. Um, Still no explanation about where the photon torpedoes come out, but that's this is supposed to be where the phasers come out of. Now, if you look at this part up close really careful, 
um, it has a little burr on it right on the spot where it's flat where it has to sit on top of this and if you don't get that off of there it's going to sit on there all crooked on you so I'm just going to really carefully knock this off with my with my sanding tool here it's just a small little nub that's on there okay that's gone now um, in this case I'm going to use uh, a little bit of my regular model glue because I'm I'm gluing a clear plastic part on here and I'm just going to put a tiny little dab on there. I don't think the clear plastic part or I mean I don't I don't think canopy glue would be a good idea to glue that on there because it's uh it's not coming out on me. I don't want to all of a sudden shoot out a big blob on me there. There we go. Um I don't want to use canopy glue on that because I just think canopy glue, you know, isn't quite strong enough to hold this on there. If something was to bump it, I think it would probably get knocked off. So we'll put it on with this regular glue and just be really careful. You just put it on dead center. And then make sure it's, um, the little cannon part there is facing straight forward, lined up with that forward line right there. And that's how that goes on. Okay. So um, we'll give this a couple of seconds to dry, you guys. Um, that way I know it won't fall off when I turn it back over. And uh, we're going to finish up here with uh, putting the navigation lights on the top. We're going to use a little bit of our um, canopy glue for that. And then I've got some fiber optics we're going to also put on the edge of the saucer here and at the little spine area that I talked about. You guys remember we got those three little lights back there. I just finished painting those anyway, so they need to dry. I just, I, I'm just i using some... Um, 1.0 size uh, fiber optic and I just took my lighter and I mushroomed over the heads of those a little bit you know heated them until they mushroom and then we're gonna just drop them right down in those holes right there with a little bit of glue so they look really nice like that so we'll be back with the rest of that in just a second okay you guys well my fiber optics have been drying here for a little bit I'll show you what I did here um, I just took these little pieces of uh, 1.0 fiber optic and I mushroomed them over and then I painted them with some of my Tamiya transparent red and green. I've already stuck one of them down in on the spine here and um, you can see I just put some tape over them and I stuck them on the edge of my bench and just painted them that way and let them dry like that so I can just pluck them out of here. We can make them shorter. I'll go ahead and um, put a little bit of glue in each one of these left these holes that are left here. I've got two more to do got a green one in the center and another red one okay <clears throat> so this red one here is um, just about the right length so I think we'll put that one in there I'm making them about a quarter of an inch long okay and then we've got a green one in the center and let's make this guy just a little shorter Okay, I'm going to take a um, Q-tip with a little bit of water on it and clean off my, got a tiny little bit of extra glue around the edges there. Just clean that up real nice. Alright, when we turn on the lights guys, we'll show you what they look like, but they look really great like that. I think they look... You know, you, the other one is a the, the kit part is like these two little pegs that stick up, and they're kind of sharp and everything, and uh, they, they probably will get broken off over time dusting it and stuff. So I think these look better, um, and it's certainly a lot easier to put them in that way than it is to uh, do the way that I was talking about there, where you can't put them in before you put the two hull halves together. So let's go around back to the saucer, you guys, and. Um, We'll finish up here with doing the uh, navigation lights. So I'll go ahead and clip these both off of the um, the sprue here. We got the red on the port and the green on the starboard. All right. And remember, I talked about here. I'm definitely using canopy glue. 
because uh, if I use model glue it's going to activate that red paint and if I happen to slip here when I put these on we could smear some red paint on the top of our paint here and it'll have to be all redone and cleaned up so this stuff won't stain the paint at all it won't attack the to me a clear just making sure I get enough in there so it's coming up all the way flush okay let's place that one I've still got a little bit of the stock that was on there left on there so it, it does help me center it. Now before this um, totally cures, I'm going to um, look up to my power supply here because what I like to do is look down into the top of it and make sure that the, um, the center part there is lined up and it was off just a little bit. where my pinpoint of light's coming on, I want it to be um, right in the middle of this little dome, so that's good right there, all right? We'll um, swing over here and get the uh, starboard side green one now. That should be good. Yep, perfectly centered. We, we lucked out on that one. All right, now we've got these two little outer ones here. So I'm going to use some, some more of this um, 0.50. This one's not quite totally dry, but I think we'll be able to get away with it. These have to be pretty short. It's not a very, you know, very deep um, drop in there. So we'll put the red one on this side. A little too much glue. Let's get the excess off of there. There we go. I'll slide this guy down in there. Pretty small guys, you just have to work with it. Alright, there it goes. Yep, a little bit of red paint came off of it too, so I'm just being careful I'll get that off there while I still can. It wasn't quite a hundred percent dry. That's okay, we got away with it. Okay, now we'll do the green one on the other side. Okay. better light on this side so we can see. Yeah, and those don't light up as bright <clears throat> as the other ones do. When you get them in low light, they look they look nice. Um, so let me think here, guys. I think we are just about there. Let's um, finish up these last two here, which are going to be these two that go on the sides of the bridge. These little red beacons. Okay, get those cut off. Oh, we've got two more to do up here as well. I just, just about forgot about those. All right. I'll go 
for the bridge first. Okay, those are in place, they look great. And now these two over here. Let's put some glue in them first. These can be a little tricky because they are very tiny. But we'll see what we can do here. All right. Okay, let's get the red one first. Now what I do is I kind of lay it up on there and let it kind of sit for a second. And then uh, just kind of tip it down in there. You got to get that little stalk to drop down in there just right. It's turning every which way except the way it should. There it goes. Okay. Now we've got to kind of um, get some glue off of this thing here. We've got to turn it a little bit. They look like these little teardrops. And like I said, I don't... <clears throat> I don't necessarily think those are the ones that are supposed to go there, but I think they look cool. They look like little, you know, streamline looking lights. Um, so let's get the other one here. We got the green one for the other side. Now, in case you're wondering, you can light these up if you want to, you guys. You can... Uh, what I'd recommend doing, and I've done a few before, is uh, you're going to use a small SMD in there. Just uh, drill that hole that's there all the way through into the in inner part of the bassard. Mount your uh, SMD facing up. You know, use a red one here and a green one there. And then take the wires from that and connect that when you come with the power wires up here to the uh, bassard. So you can just tap right into that right there and it'll pick up the power and you'll have lights right there. They weren't lit on the... Uh, the you know the big ship but um they are there as far as little colored lenses so unlit unlit is accurate but uh i do think it looks cool to light them up and i have done it on a few when the client wanted it okay we got that one in there that dropped down there a lot easier than the last one did let's just make sure it's straight Okay. Now, right now, you guys, I've temporarily got the um, the sard domes on here. Um, yeah, I think you guys can see them. Um, <clears throat> they've all been... Um, I've used my steel wool on them. They've all been diffused. They look great. But one last step I've got to do to these, you can see these three little lugs that are on here. Those are supposed to be painted. They're supposed to look the same color as the hull with a small little uh, silver... Um, where the little, it's almost like a screw is holding them on. There's supposed to be a silver little cap on there. So uh, you have to actually light block these when you paint them. So I'm going to have to mask these off, paint them black first, and then go over the top with some uh, hull color here. And then I'll just take my Sharpie and just, you know, touch that little cap right there to get that little silver effect. And um, that'll be it, you guys. <clears throat> so when we come back, I'll show you this thing all finished up. Uh, and uh, we'll we'll pick the camera up and uh, hug, you know hover around it a little bit and uh, check out all the details and everything. I've still got to also glue in the deflector dish. Remember, I said that's the very last thing I do always. Um, 
and uh, when we glue this in we have to make sure if you look at the little instruction sheet for your decals where they show the profile of the ship they show exactly which way they should sit and it should sit with the um, the, the lengthwise mount of the deflector across this way and the other mount on the uh, you know coming off of the ship should be kind of straight up so something to that effect okay and uh, we so when we put it in there we make sure we index that right and that'll be the final step, you guys. And then we'll come back and take a, a you know a last look at the whole thing when it's all finished up. And um, don't forget, after this video, maybe a few days later, I'm going to have an addendum video to this whole series where I'm going to answer some general questions that came up about this along the way. And I'm going to show you again the opening steps of uh, putting the power hub in the saucer. That seemed to be the main one that most people were uh, curious about. So, okay, we'll be back with the finale of this uh, 350 Enterprise project, guys. Okay, guys, well, we're down to the final stretch of our journey here. Um, I've been working on the uh, Bassard domes over on the other bench, and I've got these all. I took my steel wool and did my thing on the inside and out and got these all frosted real nice. And then I um, light blocked and painted these little hubs right here that you can see, the lugs that go on here. And uh, they're ready to go in, so I'm going to be using some canopy glue. I just wanted to show you that uh, little job that we did on the inside of these housings with our Dremel tool this is where it pays off you guys these things um, drop right in there real nice you don't have to struggle with them or whatever and you can um, get them in there and you can you know you can move them around and index them till they're proper now the way these are supposed to be set up is there's you'll see the the spacing on these is uneven the two that are closest together are supposed to go up on the top with this little kind of light right here right in the center and that third one on the bottom should be straight down on the bottom of the um, on the bottom side there so uh, it's time to glue these in permanently uh, well not permanently but I'm using some canopy glue again in case these would ever um, have to come off uh, but highly unlikely I'm just putting a little bit of canopy canopy glue on the edges right here and so we can get these you know put down and that's plenty strong enough to keep these on there. Okay. Let me um, turn it a little bit here so I can see that I'm indexed properly there. I think we need to turn it just a little bit back this way. Just like that. Okay. We'll go for the last one here. I did have to do quite a bit of work to these, like I mentioned, you guys. Um, around these edges, you know, where you clip off the um, the sprue material, there's some little burrs left there. And I went in here with... Um, Three twenty grit sandpaper, and then got those cleaned up, and then I took them down with six hundred, and then when I do my um, steel wool at the end, that straightens everything out. So it's a little bit of extra fiddling around there. Okay, let's uh, turn these on so you can see how they look. Get a nice frontal view there for you. And we got our multiple speeds. A little slower there. A little faster super fast that's warp 11 captain and back to our default so you got four individual speeds you can adjust there I really like the fact that Ralph went back like I mentioned and adjusted this so that they come on at the default speed and you don't have to cycle through them to get slowed down when you first power it up every time because every time you shut the model off it resets back to the default setting okay so as I mentioned guys um, the very last thing that I do is glue the uh, deflector housing on. So without making a bunch of racket and, and making you guys seasick, I'm going to pause the camera here, get it lowered down, and then we'll mount the um, deflector housing, and then we're going to call this guy done. Be right back with that, everyone. Time for the very last step, my little ceremonial mounting of the deflector dish, you guys. That's my always uh, think, little thing that I like to save for the very end of these builds. It's uh, kind of the crowning cap 
and it's a really nice detail part that goes on. You can see we've got it all ready to go. Um, as I mentioned, um, it sits in here a certain way. This um, should be sitting where the um, this angle right here, the little side horizontal piece behind the deflector just should be going straight across and the other part should be kind of like that. So again, I'm going to be using some um, canopy glue to glue this on. Um, this thing fits in here pretty tight anyway, but the reason I'm going to use some canopy glue is because, um, you know, if we would ever need to get inside the model again for any reason to get at that wiring or anything, um, this is plenty strong enough to hold that in there, but uh, you can break it free if you work at it. You know, it'll it'll dry with a little bit of, um, you know, flexibility, and it won't um, it won't uh, melt into the plastic either. You know, so just make sure I got this indexed right, and let's go for it, you guys. Kind of check it out from the side here. And that looks right to me, and it's all the way in. I'm just going to kind of double check to make sure we're in all the way. It has a little kind of a click when it pops in, which it did. All right, you guys. There's the um, deflector dish. Kind of dark down there. Uh, I'll get my uh, backdrop light out here when we have our final um, hover around the model with the uh, camera so you can see all the detail on it. Maybe if I turn it just a little bit, it'll show for you there that saucer always creates a huge shadow but there it is you guys um, this has been a nice little journey to uh, share with you guys I, I'm glad to see that a lot of you are enjoying the series or have enjoyed it and um, don't forget that um, I'll come back it'll take me a couple of days uh, a little bit later and I'm gonna make an addendum video like I talked about go back and I've written down a list of uh, some questions that have come in some of them I'll be able to show or, you know, when I talk about the saucer and doing that power lug and some of them I'll just have to answer and maybe explain a little bit because I'm not going to be going through an entire other uh, build series, but I've already started another one. So we can definitely show you how to set up that saucer wiring again. So uh, we'll pause one more time, you guys, and we'll come back with the camera uh, in free floating mode and we'll kind of float around the ship and take a look at all the detail on it and call it a wrap, everybody. We'll be right back. Here we are for the grand finale, everybody. The end of our long journey here, and it turned out really nice. I'm happy with everything that we did. And uh, just give you a quick little pan around the ship. Tim, if you're watching this, this is your finished model. I'll be uh, getting hold of you over the weekend here, and we'll get uh, everything set up to get it shipped out to you. But here's the top of the saucer. All of our details are in place now. All of our marquee lights are on, and uh, all the domes are in place and everything. We did a little bit of... Uh, weathering there at the front leading edges and here's the bottom of the saucer with our rings painted on and all the markings in place there's our deflector dish you can see that a little bit better now a little bit of weathering around the uh, housing there and uh, up along the side here with a little bit more light you can see the color of the ship coming through a little bit better it's got just a slightest little bit of a uh, greenish gray look to it Here's our uh, Bassard domes all finished up. Like I said, I like putting those inner ones in because you can just see the hint of the uh, spokes inside there when the model is not powered up, which I think looks really nice. Here's a look at the inner grills. We did that extra work there to get those to fit really nice. As you can see they're all nice and flush. Manifolds all painted up. And we'll turn it around here, check out the back. Here's our detail on the shuttle bay. Got our little detail painted inside the dome there. The impulse deck. Engine caps here at the rear. Here's the starboard side. Everything came out really nice, Tim. It's all squared up and looking really good. Let's kick on the power now. There's our lighting. 
Now you can see what I like to do there too is the uh, lower planetary sensor. You notice how that's a different color than the windows to me. That should look like that. That's uh, a different type of a light that would come out of that in my opinion. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a sensor and uh, we have the warm white light coming out on top on the bridge that matches with the other interior lighting. Here's a look at the forward part of the saucer. The sards. We'll spin it around the other side. Here's our uh, back of our shuttle bay if you want to see that lit up. Got all those light leaks in there fixed with our putty that we mixed up. There's the impulse engines. I like that little pulsing glow that Ralph adds with that 50th anniversary kit. Another shot of the bridge. Got the uh, uh, turbo shaft housing painted there. And one more look at the bottom of the saucer. Okay, everybody. Well, uh, that's going to be it. I hope you enjoyed, like I said, following along with this build series. I do these to help you guys out. And uh, again, it's nice to see that uh, a lot of people out there are making use of these, following along, and uh, it's helping out with their builds. So that's why I do them. Okay, you guys, that's a wrap. Uh, it's been a lot of fun working on this. Um, I know many of you have asked about a series on the uh, Enterprise Refit like this, an updated version. I'm thinking about it, you guys, but it'll be a while. That's a really, um, you know, intensive build. That's like a four or five month long build. And right now I just don't have time for it. You know, I promise though when the opportunity comes up, I will get back to something like that. I have a couple of the kits. Um, I have a bunch of extra parts, tons of aftermarket parts that I've gathered up for that. There's more that continues to come out, so we get to a certain point here, I'll definitely take a look at doing that. But my main focus now is going to be over the winter, um, catching up on some of my shelf queens. And then we've got the big 72-inch Enterprise that's uh, calling, calling and needing attention. And uh, that one's going to be a lot of my focus over the winter, too. So that's it, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. We really appreciate it. And I'll have that follow-up video, the addendum video here in the next couple of days. We'll answer some of your questions. So if you guys have any final questions on this, uh, pop them in the comments here, and I'll try to include them in the next session. So uh, that'll be it, everybody. Long live the USS Enterprise. I never get tired of building this beauty. It's just a fantastic model. And uh, there you go, Tim. I know you're going to enjoy it, and uh, it'll be getting out to you very soon. Take care, everybody, and happy modeling. of the starship Enterprise. Its five-year mission, to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before.